the province's interest in nuclear energy and what this uh, announcement is for? Well, I think, first of all, we're very pleased to be here today uh, through the Saskatchewan Research Council, uh, which is an organization that is, you know, very much focused on uh, enhancing the efficiency of, of uh, you know, the mining industry, uh, the, the energy industry, the electricity industry in Saskatchewan, uh, not only from a, from a financial perspective, but also from a, a sustainability perspective. Uh, to see them signing an, an agreement with, uh, with Westinghouse Electric, um, one of the largest global uh, nuclear companies in the world uh, on some incredibly exciting and new technology that will not only be useful in Saskatchewan but will be uh, useful globally in driving down uh, the or driving up the sustainability of the electricity that we're producing making it more reliable um, this technology uh, really is where to use a, an Edmonton Oiler analogy where the puck is going to be um, so happy uh, with the really excited with the Saskatchewan Research Council Westinghouse Electric um, agreement here today uh, happy to see uh, how Saskatchewan is at the very center of you know all things nuclear from the uranium uranium mining right through to nuclear production with the uh, the uh, um, the relationship between Saskatchewan-based Chemical Corporation uh, and Westinghouse and uh, you know very excited I think in the next week or so to land in the United Arab Emirates uh, at COP28 uh, to allow not only Chemical and Westinghouse but other Saskatchewan uh, based and, and uh, companies with Saskatchewan connections uh, to, to tell the how. Uh, we always know that Saskatchewan has been a, a province that exports, yes, to over 150 countries around the world, provides uh, each of those allied global citizens the opportunity uh, to improve their food and energy security uh, in their home. Um, but now uh, we are providing a, a platform for uh, those very companies to tell the how they are producing some of the most sustainably produced products in the world, lowering our emissions globally, and, and how they are producing some of the most ethically produced products in the world as well. And so uh, this is a very important day uh, from Saskatchewan's perspective, from the province's perspective, on where we are going over the next three, five, and ten years. Um, not only for our own electricity production, but how uh, we are uh, making every effort to be at the centre of uh, of uh, really a global shift, um, a global shift to uh, cleaner uh, nuclear uh, power in many, many countries around the world. Where do you see this going over the next decade? Obviously, uh, your minister was saying that you kind of championed this and you're a big supporter of it. Well, when you look at uh, you know all of the coal-fired power plants that are uh, currently in play or being built around the world in places like China and India and uh, many, many other countries uh, as well, when you look at all the natural gas plants around the world and you look at you know the very conference that we're going to in a, in a week here, uh, the COP28, and the discussion around how are we going to reduce all of those emissions. Well, the, you know, the, the shift from coal to natural gas is part of that. The, the incorporation of carbon capture and storage is part of that because we need to do it in an affordable way but we also need to uh, shift um, you know, as, as, as quickly as we are able. Ultimately at the end of the day uh, there's going to be yes renewables and there's going to be nuclear power and so what we're going to see uh, globally and this will be discussed at COP28 is the you know ultimately the doubling or the tripling or the quadrupling of of the nuclear power that we have uh, currently operating today in the world and that's going to involve large reactors it's going to involve small modular reactors which the province is looking at but it's also going to involve uh, the micro reactors like you see behind me for rural and remote communities and you can think of the importance of a reactor like this in a community uh, throughout the uh, the territory of Nunavut or Northwest Territories that today is on is on diesel diesel power generation electricity generation you can think of the opportunities for uh, mine sites uh, not only in northern Saskatchewan or rural areas of Saskatchewan but uh, northern and rural areas of Canada where you can uh, utilize this type of technology as opposed to those diesel power generators that are there now or building a, a hundred or 150 million dollar uh, power line uh, into you know, that mine site or, or said community and so uh, the opportunities uh, for, te for technology like this to come on stream I think are great um, and not only in Canada but worldwide and we're just really uh, thrilled to have the Saskatchewan Research Council and Westinghouse uh, come together uh, in the partnership that they have in developing this technology and this is this has been what the Saskatchewan Research Council has done for many many decades now is to develop uh, more efficient ways to produce the products that we do and ultimately commercialize uh, those products on behalf of the industry. Yeah, so a lot of the, the where on where it would ultimately be located will be part of the uh, the regulatory process that we go through. Um, and so that that's where that will will be decided. Yeah. Is, is there any other aspects you've been thinking about like, you know, looking at the rural communities? I'm not sure if you can
No, no, and, and this particular, like this is a, this is a development project uh, working through the, essentially the the first uh, the the first micro reactor that EVNC has, and so there's going to be uh, you know a lot of information that's going to be provided that's going to be collected and provided uh, by Saskatchewan Research Council, not just to to uh, to Westinghouse, but to the industry in general as we develop uh, more efficient micro reactors uh, around the globe. Um, but so there is a regulatory process that this will go through. Uh, Saskatchewan Research Council is familiar with that process as they were the operator of the, the Slowpoke reactor, the Slowpoke 2 reactor here in Saskatoon for 38 years. And so they have uh, a lot of experience, I would say, as much as anyone in, in navigating both the provincial regulatory process as well as the, the federal regulatory process. And things like the, the actual location of the, the facility uh, will come about throughout the consultations that happen in that process. So this funding uh, includes building an Avinci like group? Building it and then ultimately operating one of these reactors uh, in Saskatchewan. And as Saskatchewan Research Council is, you know, certainly the entity to, to not only navigate the, the regulatory process, but being the operator of the of the reactor that we had for almost four decades in this province, they, they, uh, they've been working in this industry for um, many, many decades. So just to clarify, as far as the operating costs go, like, will this like, operate for, um, I guess, well, how much, how long will that funding, you know, uh, subsidize those operating costs? Uh, the, you know what, that would be a question best for maybe uh, Mr. Crabtree as far as the details of uh, the length of operating. I, I believe this uh, this one is going to provide 5 megawatts of electricity, uh, th up to 13 megawatts of heat for about eight years, eight to ten years, is about the uh, the length of life of one of these. And again, a lot of that information is uh, going to be compiled as we go through this uh, first generation of these reactors as well. And that's why I, I would say that Saskatchewan Research Council is uh, so well positioned uh, to, uh, to, to, to sign into this partnership with Westinghouse because they'll be able to collect um, and, uh, you know, analyze all of that, that development data on that first generation technology. Saskatoon nurses are going to be rallying here this morning about working conditions in the city. Uh, will you be attending? Is there anything you'd like to see those rally here? You no, know, I'm actually heading back down to Regina as we're in session uh, here this morning. Um, but you know what I would say is uh, we we need uh, largely when it comes to healthcare in general, whether it's nurses of all designations, LPN nurse practitioners or RNs, um, psychiatric nurses, whatever uh, the the uh, designation may be, we need more. Uh, and and I, I think they would agree with that. We're doing everything we can uh, to recruit and train and, and retain uh, the nurses that we do have here uh, in this province. All of the, the health workers that we have uh, here in Saskatchewan through our four-point action plan. Um, but I, I think we have to be even more ambitious in the in the years ahead, as uh, you know, every other province is faced with the the same challenge. It's not one that's exclusive to Saskatchewan. We've been trying to build facilities and uh, we've been uh, you know, doing all we can to increase the numbers of, of medical professionals that we have working in our facilities and we have uh, increased uh, nurses and physicians substantially, but there's still more work to do um, and we're still a growing province. Uh, we have people arriving here each and every year and so uh, it's a job that uh, most certainly isn't done, uh, but it is a job that uh, we're committed to uh, you know, finding a way. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.